Titans made another splash move on Sunday, signing safety Quandre Diggs. And the move gets a B-plus grade from me. I'll explain why on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, today's edition of the Locked On Titans podcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the playoffs end. The sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On today's show, I'm going to tell you why I am given a B-plus grade to the signing of Quandre Diggs. Also, I'm going to tell you why this makes the Titans one of the top secondaries in the NFL. And also, the Titans still need to do a little bit more. I think they need to get an edge one way or another. So I'll go over the options there. Before we get into all of it, do want to thank you for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. You're not going to beat that anywhere else. Make sure that you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. And speaking of every day, shout out to my everydayers out there tuning in Monday through Friday. Couldn't do it without you guys. The rest of this week, tomorrow, I'm going over the projected starters for the Titans at this moment in time. Then the Titans are back out on the practice field on Wednesday and Thursday. I'll be breaking that down, getting you guys ready for the first preseason game of the year. It is the perfect time to get subscribed, stay subscribed to the Locked on Titans podcast, the number one Tennessee Titans podcast in the world. With that being said, though, as I said up front, and I'm certain that you saw in the title or the thumbnail or whatever, I'm giving this signing a B-plus grade. I think this is a really good move for the Tennessee Titans. We talked about it yesterday, and I will reiterate it here. Quandre Diggs is a great fit for what the Titans need in their defense. He's a great fit with the skill sets of the other safeties that are in the group with him. The value of the deal is excellent. It's a cheap deal, up to $5 million with some incentives. It's going to be about $3, $4 million in base, probably, maybe even a little bit cheaper. And then you have the ability to get incentives up to $5 million, which every Titans fan right now should be hoping that Quandre Diggs hits all of those incentives. So it was a major need. It was a great fit. It was a great value. We've been talking about this for weeks now that the Titans needed to make, maybe even you could say months back into June, we've been talking about how the Titans need to go out and get another safety. So those are all very, very positive reasons. Again, the skill set, Quandre Diggs is a coverage guy, 24 career interceptions. He's going to be able to play the back end like that Geno Stone role. Uh, Ian Rappaport of NFL Network was at Titans training camp on Sunday, and he reported on the Quandre Diggs signing. He did a little hit on NFL Network. And he said that the Titans are trying to replicate the Ravens' defense. So we've been wondering what this defense will actually look like. We've heard what Denard Wilson had to say. We've heard about his influences. We know his background with the Ravens last year, the Eagles before that, the Jets before that. But we don't really know exactly what his plan is on defense. We haven't seen it yet. But I think this is another piece of evidence to tell us that they are going to have that Baltimore Ravens style where you're coming from a bunch of different directions. You got people blitzing from different levels and different areas. But one thing about that Ravens defense is last year they had Geno Stone. And I reference back to the breaking bonus episode that I did. Geno Stone had a ton of interceptions last year for the Ravens. I actually was very interested in signing Geno Stone in free agency to fill this role. Geno Stone was that back-end player, that center fielder, that, you know, traffic cop in the back end. And that's exactly what Quandre Diggs is going to be. So, for a fit standpoint within the defense, 
it makes a ton of sense. The skill set of the safety, Amani Hooker is more versatile. Jamal Adams is obviously a physical safety. I would say Elijah Molden is kind of in between Jamal Adams and Amani Hooker in terms of his skill set. So now you have some overlap, but you also have some variety in the skill set of the, of the safety group. So all of that together makes this a B-plus grade for me. Curious to hear what you guys have to say. What grade would you give the Quandre Diggs signing? But we do have to acknowledge some downside here. This isn't, you know, it's not like the Titans are getting a fully elite level player that's still in his absolute prime, okay? Quandre Diggs is 31 years old. While he's been incredibly reliable the last four years in terms of playing every single game possible, you're still dealing with an older player, and as players get older, it's not that their level of play drops off entirely, but they start to get hurt. Look at a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, for example, who... You know, now, three out of the last four years, or two out of the last three years, he's going to be dealing with some sort of injury. Whether he gets totally back from it or not, it's just a reality that as you get older, you start to get hurt more. That's just part of being a professional athlete. That's just how it works. So, it is an older player who's 31, and, and Quandre Diggs may not be... Quandre Diggs did make the Pro Bowl three years out of the last four. But the year that he didn't was last year. And last year, there were some struggles. And you look at the pro football focus grade. He was one of the lowest rated starting safeties. Um, he is a guy who has lost a little bit of a step. So while Quandre Diggs is exactly what the Titans needed, and I'm very happy about the signing, we do have to at least acknowledge that there is some downside. The Titans aren't getting an all pro level safety or anything like that. But Diggs is still a very good safety, and that's what they need. So with all that in account, I'm giving the Quandre Diggs signing a very good grade. It's a B plus for me. There are downsides. This isn't a long-term solution. You know, like the Titans haven't fixed their safety position for the future. I mean, Amani Hooker's deal is going to be up soon. Quandre Diggs is a one-year signing. Jamal Adams, one-year signing. Elijah Molden going into year four, going to be a free agent. So the Titans are looking at all four of their guys, all four of their top safeties, could not be on the roster this time next year. I mean, Amani Hooker has another year on the deal, but the Titans could certainly get out of it for cheap if they thought they could go another direction. So this is a great move for right now. It doesn't really have long-term solution to it. And Quandre Diggs is a good player, but he may not be in his absolute prime. So you take all that together to me, it's a B-plus grade, very good signing for the Titans, very excited that they made this move. And again, this is something that we've been waiting on. And I will tell you one thing that actually made this even better is seeing all the Indianapolis Colts fans freak out because Chris Ballard, once again, has done absolutely nothing to upgrade their team. So I thought that was pretty funny as well, seeing all the Colts fans cry about Chris Ballard's inaction, the most overrated general manager in the entire NFL. But with that being said, does this make the Titans the best secondary in the NFL? I'm going to talk about where they stand and how this defense could end up being elite at the end of the day. We'll talk about all that now. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. I love sports. I think that's pretty obvious to anyone who watches the show. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But the reality is, this time of year, the playoffs wind down and end. We get fewer games, and the sports just stop sporting like we want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open up the app, and I can dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood, like, Maybe Titans plus four and a half week one against the Chicago Bears. Great value there. Either way, this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Titans fans, let's continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Giving a grade to the Quandre Diggs signing. I got it a B plus. 
Great move for the Titans, really smart, but, you know, there are still some downsides to it as well, but that's perfectly fine. Any move that you make this time of year is going to have some of those things to it, but a good move for the Titans that, quite honestly, makes them one of the top secondaries in the entire NFL. So I'll go over that and how the Tennessee Titans can be an elite defense. Also, I think the Titans still need an edge rusher, so we're going to talk about who's available and what avenues the Titans can take to fill that role. Also, is Arden Key getting suspended? I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well. What's going on there? But before we get into all of it, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen today. For your second listen, though, enjoy the Locked on Fantasy Football podcast. You get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so you can win your league this season. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Also, do just want to thank you guys. I know that my first show yesterday, uh, before the dig signing, the audio was kind of cutting out. There were some technical problems. Major internet issue here in my area. So my apologies. Wanted to still give you some content, but looks like got everything ironed out on today's show. So thank you guys so much for bearing with me there. But I think this is easily one of the top three secondaries in the NFL. I mean, looking at some of the best secondaries in the NFL, in my opinion, look at the Cleveland Browns. They have Denzel Ward, an elite number one corner. Uh, Martin Emerson Jr. has been a very good player. Uh, Greg Newsom, who I liked a lot. I liked Greg Newsom better than Caleb Farley coming out uh, of college that year. I wish the Titans would have uh, been able to get Greg Newsom. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do that. Understandable. But Greg Newsom has been a pretty solid cornerback when he's healthy. You got Juan Thornhill, Grant Delpit at safety. I mean, they got a good secondary in Cleveland. You got to give them their props there. You look at the Jets, Sauce Gardner, Michael Carter, DJ. That's probably the best group of corners in the entire NFL if it's not the Titans, right? I mean, that's a great group right there. Tony Adams and Chuck Clark at safety, though. Eh, You know, the 49ers, also good secondary. Shavarius Ward, Isaac Yottam, uh, Dem Lenore. Good players in the secondary. Uh, Hafunga at safety. Um, Jair Brown as well. But, I mean, you know, there are some worries there. Brown, Lenore, what are you really going to get there? Um, And then the Dolphins have a good safety as well with Jalen Ramsey. They added Kendall Fuller. They got Kahoo in the slot. Uh, Javon Holland, one of the best safeties in the NFL. That's a great one. They add Jordan Poyer. From the Bills, I mean, that is a good secondary as well. But if you look at all of them, I think that the Titans have advantages. So the Browns are pretty good, I got to admit. But is Newsom going to be healthy? Delpit, you're not always certain what you're going to get there. I think the Titans are right there with the Browns. Maybe you could give an advantage to the Browns. I'm not going to fight with somebody on it. But you look at the Jets, great cornerbacks. But the Titans cornerbacks may still be better. And then the Titans have better safeties. Tony Adams, Chuck Clark. I'm taking Quandre Diggs and Amani Hooker over those two. So I give the Titans the advantage there. 49ers, again, some good pieces. Chavarius Ward, Hafunga. But overall, from top to bottom, I think the Titans have a better group, you know? And the Dolphins have a really good group too. But the depth, I think, look at Jamal Adams as the third safety. Elijah Molden is your fourth safety. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. is your fourth cornerback. The Titans have better depth in their secondary than the Dolphins. So, I mean, I'm giving the Titans top three, no doubt about it. Probably top two with the Browns, in my opinion, as the top secondary in the NFL. And what a massive change that is from previous years. I mean, look at the Titans secondary from last year. Fulton, Sean Murphy, Bunting, uh, Amani Hooker. You start out with Kevin Byard, of course, but after that, you're looking at You know, Kayvon Wallace, Mike Brown, Elijah Molden, stuff like that. So, what an incredible upgrade. And it makes sense because Denard Wilson is a secondary guy. He's a defensive back coach in nature. He's a guy who relies heavily on safeties in his defense. So, it it does make sense that the Titans focused the way that they did on the secondary. But what a needed and incredible upgrade from previous years to now with where the Titans secondary is at. And that is one step towards this defense being elite. I mean, I think that this defense at this point has a chance to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. But look, some things do need to break right. So what needs to happen for the Titans defense to be elite? Okay, 
Well, number one is health. The Titans need Cheeto to get back healthy. Sneed to stay healthy. Amani Hooker to stay healthy. Jeff Simmons to stay healthy. Harold Landry, Jamal Adams. Like, they're going to need everybody to have a decent amount of health for them to be able to be at the level that they can be. Now, I'm not breaking any news by saying that. Obviously, it's kind of a given for most teams. They need their best players on defense to stay healthy if they want to be a good defense. But it's more than that. I'm looking at the middle of the defense. Kenneth Murray and Tavondre Sweat. If Tavondre Sweat is in contention for rookie of the year on defense, if Kenneth Murray has a breakout season where he matches his potential coming out of the draft as a first rounder, then then the Titans can absolutely cook. You know, like we're talking about With the ability to get pressure up front with Sweat and Simmons commanding double teams, being able to stop the team in nickel, having Jamal Adams as an early down nickel back who can help you stop the run as well. Kenneth Murray is a a physically elite linebacker. Not elite totally, but just his physical attributes. Size, speed, aggressiveness, quick twitch. Like, if Kenneth Murray can combine that with improved... You know, you want to say improved, like, mental aspects, like coverage, understanding, awareness, uh, the ability to diagnose the run and key to the right spot. He does need to improve there no matter what. But also, you know, Kenneth Murray talked about this in a press conference recently that, you know, this scheme that he's in under Denard Wilson is much different than what they were doing with the Chargers. Now he's able to just get downhill and just fill lanes in the run game and blitz. And before it was a lot of reading the defense, staying in your lane, holding still, you know, he's just playing faster. So it's kind of a combination of the scheme can help bridge that gap of some of those improvements that need to be made. He doesn't need to improve as much as you would think because the scheme is going to help him. So if you get a Kenneth Murray breakout at middle linebacker, Tavondre Sweat is the player he looks like he's going to be in training camp. And the Titans stay healthy, they absolutely have the talent to be one of the best defenses in the entire NFL. Now, one thing I think that they do need also is another edge rusher. We've been talking about that just like we've been talking about safety. The Titans have yet to make that move on a big scale. Maybe you count Shane Ray as that move. I don't know. But I still think they need to add another edge. And we'll talk about who's available, how they can get them, and what the heck is going on with Arden Key suspension. So we'll discuss that now. Before we do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is sponsored by Better Help. But what are your self care non negotiables? You know, mine is getting around to golfing every week. Maybe it's something like you never skip leg day, but. Maybe you should never skip therapy day either. When your schedule is packed, you got kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, that's when your non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. I've worked with BetterHelp. It was an incredibly easy experience, really stress-free, and it helped me in in, in an important time. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you have to give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire, and you're going to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge as well. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on, and you'll get 10% off your first month today. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Titans fans, let's cap off today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Gave a grade to the Quandre Diggs signing. Talked about where the Titans secondary fits within the NFL and how this defense can end up being elite this season. But now I want to talk about the last step of making the defense elite and this Arden Key situation. So I have contended for months now, just like safety, 
that the Titans need another edge rusher and they need a big physical edge rusher. There are some available guys still on the market that make sense, but there's one trade option that could make a ton of sense as well. Before I get into it, though, do want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. But now, for your second listen, go check out Locked On Fantasy Football. You're going to get daily insights to the best fantasy draft strategies so you can win your league this season. You can find the link to Locked On Fantasy Football in the description so you don't even need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But looking at free agency, the Lawson fellas, who we've been talking about for a while, you have Carl Lawson still available. You have Shaq Lawson still available. Now, I would prefer Carl Lawson. You have the Bengals connection coming off the injuries. There might still be some upside there. He did recently take a visit with the Dallas Cowboys. Not certain uh, whether they're going to sign him or not. You never really know for certain. Um, I liked Emmanuel Ogba, but he got swooped up by the Miami Dolphins. Shaq Lawson could make some sense. I don't think there's as much upside there as maybe Carl Lawson, but uh, another body would just be very important in my opinion. And this kind of ties into the Arden Key thing, and I talked about this recently, but I wasn't in favor of Yannick Ngakwe. I didn't want the Titans to sign Yannick Ngakwe. Number one, he's known as a selfish player who doesn't really hustle all the time and just wants to get his own sacks. That's why he's a guy who's been super productive for the last few years, but still is on the market right now. Um, I didn't want Yannick Ngakwe because of that, but also he is just a pass rush first player. He's not really a run stopper. And I was like, well, the Titans really need a run stopper to go with Arden Key and Harold Landry. But if Arden Key is going to be suspended for six games, well, then why not get Yannick Ngakwe, who can kind of fill the Arden Key role for the Titans? Why not? But I want to throw another name in here that we haven't talked about a lot. And we've seen some rumors recently that the Titans might have shown some interest in this player on the trade market. And it's Hassan Reddick. Currently on the New York Jets. Got traded there from the Eagles. But he is not reported to the New York Jets. Now, indications are that they're trying to work out a contract for him. He wants more money, new money. But. If it doesn't work out and he refuses to show up and the Jets don't want to pay that money and they don't want to give him a new contract, which what an absolute blunder by the New York Jets. Anytime we see these moves, anytime we see these veteran trades, when a guy wants a contract and he doesn't get it, so he asks for a trade, the trade coincides with an immediate extension. Like if you trade for a player that wants a new contract, usually you have agreed to the contract with the trade, like, for example, Legereus Sneed. The Titans didn't just trade for Sneed and say, we'll figure out the contract later. They figured out the contract while they figured out the trade. They would not have made the trade for Sneed if they didn't already have the contract figured out. So the Jets, just really stupid by them to make that trade and uh, be this far off from a contract. And now you have this big issue. You lose. Bryce Huff, you don't have someone to replace him. So if the Jets just want to get out of that business, make the trade with the Titans. The Titans get Hassan Reddick. They'll give him a contract. And let me say this. I'm going to pat myself on the back just a little bit. Look, folks, if you don't hype yourself up, no one will. If John Robinson would have listened to me in 2021 and not signed Bud Dupree and signed Hassan Reddick instead for cheaper the Titans would be in a much better situation right now. And I've talked recently about how the Titans need a top-tier edge. And Hassan Riddick has shown over the last few years he can be that. So I would I would consider it. And again, we heard whispers that the Titans were interested in Hassan Riddick when he was still on the Eagles earlier this offseason. Ultimately didn't make that trade, probably because they didn't want to pay that money, but maybe things have changed now. So... Just keeping an eye on that. Don't think it's really going to happen, but hey, it's an option. It's a really good edge rusher that's out there. But let me say this before we go for the day. What is going on with Arden Key? He was asked about the suspension last week. He declined to talk about it. The suspensions that came out for certain players 
Danico Autry being one of them, those were already all announced. You had to think that the Arden Key suspension should have come out by now. So to me, just logic would tell us that behind the scenes, Arden Key's people and the NFL have some hesitation about this suspension. Will it actually happen? And for Arden Key not to comment on it, and for Brian Callahan not to comment on it, and for the news to have come out, you know, a week ago. I mean, it's been a while now, right? It happened on a Friday, I do believe, or a Thursday, a couple weeks ago, 10 days ago at this point, and still nothing. So, two things. One, let's hope Arden Key isn't suspended because they need him. And two... Man, it's going to look bad on PK if he got that report wrong. Just saying. Now the suspension, because I say this and I express hesitation, the suspension will probably pop up this week and be confirmed and all of that. But hey, it hasn't happened yet. And that should give us some optimism that maybe Arden Key can win that battle and not be suspended. So we'll be interesting to see. But with that being said, like on the video, tighten up in the chat. That's going to do it for me today, folks, as always. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titans.